Hi, I'm Matt with Cool Metal, and I'm going to give you a little video installation guide here as to uh, how to install and connect up your Cool Metal Air Ride. <clears throat> Here's the, the whole system that you're going to get, including the bike's battery in here. And uh, <clears throat> what you're going to do is this is this is the valve body, and uh, obviously that's your shock, and obviously that's the air pump. Now this is the big pump. Uh, there is also a small pump that comes in some of the kits, but depending on your installation and uh, which bike it's going into and how much room you have to install it. Um, but the connection of the pumps is uh, identical. And then here's your switch harness going up to your handlebars or out to your side cover or wherever you want to mount your two actuation switches. This is a, uh, an inline fuse, momentary fuse, 20 amps you want to connect that to your battery. So what you do is connect one side of your fuse uh, to the battery and then you connect the other side of the fuse to the red lead that goes into the valve bodies that's got the little uh, <clears throat> crimp on connector on it and um, the, uh, the other red wire that comes out of this wiring harness that comes out of the valve bodies has a uh, pin female connector on it uh, pin style and the pump has a pin style female connector on it on its red wire so you plug the, the pumps red into the wiring harness into that connector the black coming out of the valve body wiring harness goes to the negative of the battery the black from the pump goes to the negative of the battery or any good chassis ground and then your two switches that go to your side cover your handlebars under your seat wherever you want them they just have a pre-wire connector that screws together and that connector comes out of your wiring harness on your valve bodies. <clears throat> so that's all there is to it, to the wiring. For the air connections, you connect your pump output to the single side of the valve bodies. You connect one of your outputs where the two, the two come out, that's the output side. The single is the input side. Uh, you connect generally the red one to the primary side of your shock. That's the one that's going to raise it up. And you connect your yellow one to the back pressure side of your shock. That's the one that's going to drop it down. If you reverse those, all that happens is it changes which switch does what. Both valves are essentially identical inside the valve body. So it really doesn't matter. And as a matter of fact, if you want to change the way your switches operate, that's a good way to do it on down the road if you just prefer to uh, switch them around. So right now I've got uh, the top switch hooked to the primary. And uh, when I push it in one direction, it pumps up the primary. And then in the other direction, it releases the primary. That raises and lowers your bike. Okay, so pump up your bike, raise the back end. Okay, now I'm going to push the, uh, the second switch, which is going to put a little back pressure on the piston. It's going to lower your bike down a little bit. And it's going to firm up the ride, and it's going to keep your bike from topping out and going bonk, bonk, bonk down the road like a pogo stick. So with a little back pressure on this system now, you've got excellent damping characteristics, excellent ride quality, and uh, no topping out of the shock. And uh, this system rides even better than a progressive type spring as far as ride comfort. So you've got the best of both worlds. You can slam your bike when you park it, and um, you can <clears throat> have an excellent ride quality while you're riding and then of course you can adjust it for two up and one up which is really sweet. Um, most people wire their whole system directly to the battery just like we've done so that when you park your bike and shut it off when you're done you, know, you can go ahead and slam your bike down then when you're done with lunch or whatever and you come out before you even start your bike up you go ahead and raise it back up and then you can start your bike and then, of course, if you get the remote control option for this, you want it to function without the keys of the bike on. So that's basically the, it. That's how you uh, connect up your Cool Metal Air Ride system. And uh, also, too, before you install it in the bike, it's, also, it's a very good idea to assemble it on the bench just like this. All you need is a couple short air lines. <clears throat> Pump the whole thing up on the primary side. Make sure it all functions well and make sure it holds air. If it holds air on the bench, it's probably going to hold air when you put it on the bike. It's a lot easier to work on it right now on the bench. Uh, pump
pump up the primary side with some good pressure and the back, back pressure side with some good pressure. Leave it sit overnight. Come out in the morning, see if there's still pressure in it. If it's got any kind of a leak by the morning, the pressure it will be down to zero. If you've got a set of gauges you can use, and you can hook up a gauge like this in line, that's great. Most people probably don't have one. Um, this is a good, if you're in a hurry and you want to watch it for five minutes and see if it's leaked anything, you can do that. But if you leave it overnight, you're good to go. If you got any leaks, a little soapy water in a spray bottle on the fittings, that's how you find out where it's leaking. A lot of times it's just a little Teflon tape in these little uh, threaded pipe threads that's causing you the problem. And um, these connectors here, of course, you have to push the line in and pull that back to disconnect those. They're tough. They are tough to pull out. There can't be any pressure in there or it's not going to let you pull it out. Then when you engage it, just all the way in until it's completely bottom. Give it a good tug. That will not come out of there under pressure. And that's basically it.